YouTube, this is Practice Prepper, and today I am processing dumpster food that I just grabbed out of my grocery store's dumpster. I used to go dumpster diving all the time. It was wonderful. I got hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands of dollars worth of free organic produce out of the dumpster. I get out of the habit because uh, things just got chaotic with my boy starting school and everything. Uh, but today's my first day back and it was a really good score today. When I opened it up, I saw that there was a lot of potatoes, tomatoes, onions, uh, some hot peppers, a lot of summer squash, and some cucumbers. And all that stuff, with the exception maybe of the cucumbers, to me says potato soup. So I grabbed it all using some nice rubber gloves that I have. They're fabric gloves with a, a rubberized outer coating. I think that's good because it keeps them from getting punctured. Grabbed all that stuff out of there. I throw it into just a dirty tub. I bring the tub back here. This is my entryway. My compost pile is right down here. So I'm, anything that I pull out of here that I'm like, yeah, it's not worth keeping, goes right down in there. But all the other stuff, what I do is I'll just take it. Here's a potato. Drop it into the rinse bucket. Now this bucket just has water in it. It's not soap water or anything like that. Just water. And the idea here is to just get the, the bulk of the junk off of it. You know, uh, any coffee grounds or, you know, whatever. Just to crudely rinse the stuff. Here's an apple. And pop it into this bucket. Now this stuff is not by any stretch clean at this point. It's just cleaner than it was before. Once I go through all of this stuff and I, I get it all in here, I'll just dump this guy out. Kind of uh, basically clean out my, uh, my tub here for next time. And I'm going to take this, bring it inside, right into the bathtub, fill it up with water, and put some good soap in here. Get it nice and sudsy. So, um, I'll scrub all these things off here, and once they're all scrubbed off, rinse them, put on them on the kitchen counter, let them dry, and then I go and process all of it. Now, this is something, like I said, it saves hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands of dollars during regular times. I don't think that it's a particularly useful skill uh, you know, in, in itself for like, you know, collapse environment because grocery stores are going to stop getting food. So they're going to stop filling up their dumpster with all the food that they're wasting and everything. So I, I don't think that, you know, you can necessarily count on, you know, jumping into a dumpster to survive SHDF or anything like that. But what is useful about this in terms of, uh, of all that is the idea of just being resourceful and understanding that just because something is a little dirty, has some coffee grounds or whatever on it, it doesn't mean that it's inedible, and it can still be perfectly good, delicious, healthy food if it's process processed safely. And during you know non-SHTF times, that's the time to practice all those skills. It does take some time, though. It's a, it's a time commitment. And that's why I, I kind of stopped doing it for a while. Because once you get a big tub of this stuff, it... Uh, it kind of feels like an obligation that you gotta, you got to go through all of it. And while you could just throw it into the compost, which was my initial reason for ever going to the dumpster in the first place, it just seems so wasteful. It is, a, it is just astonishing. What you see here, this is one afternoon at a grocery store. And this is, this is enough food. What I've got here, this is enough food for a family to live for a week or more. Granted, it's a lot of potatoes, <laughs> but it's just, it's amazing. It just astonishes me, the amount of waste going on in our world today. And the grocery store that I got this stuff from, it's an organic food co-op. It's all about, you know, crunchy, save the world and everything like that, but still an unconscionable amount of waste. But we, uh, we can capture that resource, use it, and save a lot of money while we're at it. That's it. Give it a try. Be, be safe. Wear gloves. Even eye protection is good, and wash, 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 and cook everything you get out if you want to be, uh, you know, really safe about it. That's it. Thanks for watching. Whoa, okay, I just finished cutting the video you saw, and there were some pretty big safety provisos that I didn't mention when I was uh, going through the whole thing that I should mention now. One is, I'm primarily a vegetarian, so I'm only pulling fruits and vegetables out of there. There are chicken cadavers and bones and things of that nature, and I'll grab those for compost sometimes. Uh, but I'm not pulling rotting meat out of these dumpsters and eating it. Um, granted, there is certainly the potential for cross-contamination onto the vegetables that I am pulling out, but I am primarily pulling out fresh fruits and vegetables, not even rotting fruits and vegetables. They're, these are things that hours or even minutes earlier were in the produce aisle of the grocery store and they were removed because they have a spot on them or, or you know a little soft section or a mark or something like that. And grocery stores know that if people are given a choice between an apple with a mark and without one, they're just never going to buy that marked apple. So it goes into the dumpster, unfortunately. Uh, so those are the types of things that I'm pulling out of there. 
fresh fruits and vegetables. Uh, also, I'm primarily doing this in the cooler months. Now, in the summer you can go, but there's more flies and maggots and all that kind of stuff. It's just grosser, and I just don't tend to do that. Uh, I'm doing it in the fall and the early spring and the winter. In the winter in particular, uh, it's a situation where people are bringing produce from the grocery uh, store produce aisle out into what is functionally an ice box because it's a dumpster in the winter. Oftentimes they'll be placed in like a bed of snow <laughs> in the thing. So uh, that gives me a great sense of safety doing it that way. Now that said, I am also uh, recognizing that there is a risk in what I do. There's also a risk in going to restaurants. You always hear about people getting sick from you know, food po poisoning or salmonella at a, re at a restaurant or, or whatever. Granted, eating out of a dumpster I think puts you at slightly higher risk, but if you recognize that risk and you initiate the countermeasures, like really cooking stuff well, you're going to protect yourself in it enormously from a lot of that stuff, but you still have to recognize that whatever you do in life, it has risks. I accept those risks. If you do this type of thing, you should accept it too. But if you do accept those risks, there are great benefits. This is uh, some of the uh, potato soup that I made. I get 10 of these big jars of potato. Did I say tomato? I meant potato. If I don't know what I said. Uh, I got 10 of these big jars of potato soup. It was just great with the tomatoes and onions and potatoes in there. I took the summer squash, blended that all in there. I love immersion blenders. It just makes soup taste so much better. Um, you know, it just blends all the flavors together. The summer squash kind of thinned it out, gave it a little bit of a sweetness, and the hot peppers that I put in there were just, just really great. I threw in some carrots that I had in the refrigerator and, you know, salt and oil, and, uh, you know, all, all the other kind of things. Some celery salt I, I, I put in as well. But, uh, oh, it's just really delicious, and this one came out really well. I, I never work from a recipe, so, you know, some of my stuff is, you know, really good, some of it's okay, and then there's the other stuff. But this stuff came out really great. I'm excited about eating this. Uh, the other thing I wanted to talk about now that, it, you know, I'm shooting this video anyway, is I got two people uh, that I wanted to thank very much for uh, making some Patreon contributions to this channel, and specifically to the new Alien uh, Invasion series coming up. Uh, and the first one is... Uh, and, I'm sorry, I have so much trouble with people's names all the time. I, uh, why can't I just have, like, John Smith donating? <laughs> John Smith, if you're out there, I'd love a donation because I can pronounce your name really well. This is Chris, and Chris, I'm sorry, it's just your last name. I don't know if it's supposed to be a French pronunciation or if it's anglicized. D-E-S-M-A-R-A-I-S. -A -A Chris Demarais or Demaris? I'm not sure, but thank you very much, Chris. Uh, you seem like you, uh, I've you know, spoken to you just through uh, chat a little bit and it, uh, you know, comments, uh, and uh, you seem like you have your, your shit together, and uh, it, it's just wonderful to have you in the community. Please leave comments for other people because you seem like you know a lot, and any ideas that you have that you want to share with other people, I'm sure others would benefit from that as well. Uh, the second person I wanted to thank uh, has uh, an easy name to pronounce and an awesome screen name. Uh, this is Dennis Oakley. And whose screen name is Ragnarok, which is one of my favorite words um, in any language. So thank you very much, Dennis, uh, for your contribution. Remember, both of you guys have a chance to suggest episodes. You know, I know we've already talked about that a little bit. Suggest some episode topics for me. They can be something fun and crazy. You know, my well, maybe you don't know my channel if you're new to it, but I, I did an episode on using a chainsaw for home defense, which is my funniest episode ever, in my opinion, and... Not that many people have seen it. I think it's, it's under a thousand views. It's well worth a watch. I think it's the most entertaining piece of artwork. I will call that one artwork. The most entertaining piece of artwork I have done for this channel yet. I'll put a, a little link up there for you if you want to check it out. So thank you again for your, um, for your contributions. Thank you very much for watching. And if you are going to do some dumpster diving, just take some precautions. Understand that there are risks associated with it, but also rewards. That's it. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and tune in every Friday at 4.30 New York time for a new video.